Okay, so in the previous lecture we talked about at the edge and set, which are those two conjectures that says that um, you cannot, so at the edge, oops, uh, at the edge and set, so at the edge says that three sat. Uh, cannot be solved in uh, two small o n. And said the strong solution time hypothesis said, in fact, if you allow me large clauses, k sat not be solved in 2 to the uh, n if k goes to infinity and k go right to the bigger clauses and you really cannot go do exactly the exponential line and of course this is with some you know this is uh, running time with star right so you know we're ignoring stupid uh, polynomial terms and stuff like that Okay, and then we saw that immediately had some interesting implication because you can, uh, uh, since you have linear size reduction or linear time reduction from a SAT to, to the problem like vertex cover and so on, this immediately implies that um, uh, those problems uh, cannot be, uh, you know, uh, cannot be solved uh, efficiently uh, as far as the parameter is concerned, right? Okay, so, um, and then we saw, in addition, we saw that uh, there is a reduction from SAT to planus 3 SAT. 3 SAT to planus. Three SAT. Okay, and that implies that those problems, you know, uh, if we have a graph of size n, we cannot solve, uh, we cannot hope to solve them in time better than 2 to the square root n. And the square root here is because the reduction from pre sat to the planar version uh, makes the graph larger by quadratic term. So you have to use the inverse function to get the, the other direction. Okay. So this is what we saw in the previous lecture. Okay, so in particular, this reduction about planar graphs uh, works for a large number of problems. Uh, so here's this theorem that states the least. Let's quickly go through it. So uh, you cannot do better than two square root the size of the graph. Uh, and this includes planar vertex cover, planar dominating set, planar uh, feedback vertex set, planar tree coloring, and uh, planar Hamiltonian cycle, right? So you cannot do better than this running time. And in fact, you can get this running time. Essentially, you just apply the planar separating theorem and you get it. You can also get it through three bit, which I think is what uh, the book does. Okay, so the question, of course, is how does this help us uh, with parameterized complexity, um, which we are not dealing with yet. So this is section, uh, section fourteen three, right? And what we need is a basic observation how the parameterized is being preserved or changed by the reduction. Right? So this is observation, observation 1410. And this observation tells us the following thing, right? We have a problem A with parameter K, and we have a reduction. This is polynomial time, poly time, uh, fixed parameter reduction, right? right? So this is a reduction that reduces the instance to B 
with function g of uh, k. So if we have such a reduction, then then what? Uh, then an algorithm, if we can solve B quickly, then we can solve A, right? So then an, an algorithm with uh, running time. Okay, so we are using the star notation. Again, we're ignoring polynomial uh, stuff, right? So we care only about, so uh, an algorithm that runs in this time for B, this is important, right? This is for B. As, as usual with reduction, you have to remember the right side. Then this implies uh, an algorithm with running time um, right again 2 to the f of the g of x uh, of k of course not x okay so this is the reduction right and intuitively what it really means is because we usually assume usually we assume that B is hard right so usually we assume B is hard in fact we assume B is cannot be solved in time better than uh, uh, you know Omega of K then what we will get is uh, A cannot be solved in time better than two to the, you know, omega of G, we need the inverse of G, right? Uh, G of K, right? Um, right, and usually B of course is three sat because that's the only problem we really know. Okay. Okay, so the thing to remember here, which I skipped over is that you know, you can always take uh, a three sat instance which have k variable, it sizes k essentially. And as such, we get this that it's a fixed parameter. Uh, you know, you cannot do better than to do the k under at the edge, right? And now, because the instance of size k, you can do the reduction we saw before, right? And instead of, you know, you can just treat k as the, the size of the instance in this case. So immediately get from the above reduction that you know all this problem about uh, planar graphs are also uh, hard other at the edge. So again, with this uh, square root phenomena, right? Because there is a blow up of the reduction of size k. So this is this is in some sense not very interesting uh, reductions because. They really just, you know, so, you know, you map it into an instance and the parameter is just the size of the problem and you're done. Um, and, you know, uh, so, so in some sense, it's kind of uh, as I said, simple. Anyway, in this reduction, we get, in this case, we get that, you know, planar vertex case, planar vertex cover you know cannot be solved uh, requires requires two to the you know again this is o star if you want omega star uh, let's do o star that is the book window two to the two square root of k time uh, well, and there are other problem of the the same kind we saw before. Let me not list them because they're not especially interesting. Um, maybe I should say. Let me put in fact omega here. Okay. 
Okay, so under at h, you cannot solve this problem better than 2 to the square root of the k of the parameter. Um, right? Which is the side the side of the solution. Right? Um, so this is not especially interesting because this is pretty straight forwards. Um, okay, so the interesting uh, thing that's interesting once we have reduction that in fact shrinks, reduces the parameter because once we reduce the parameter size, we can get a super linear uh, lower bound in the exponent as far as the parameter is concerned. So a very nice example of it is this k by k click problem. So the way to think about it is that you have a graph that looks like uh, a grid. There are k rows and k columns. Okay. And now, you know, every two vertices might be connected or disconnected, you know, the just the structure is a grid, but the connectivity is not a grid connectivity, right? You, you just connect whoever you want. And the k by k click question ask, is there a way to choose uh, k vertices, one from each row? So each row must contain only one vertex. Notice the two, uh, two vertices can come from the same column. So that doesn't really matter, right? Um, I guess my matrix is missing a row. Uh, no, it's in fact uh, fine. Uh, it's missing a column, yeah. Um, so, <coughs> so now the question is, is there a click? You know, if can we pick a, a vertex from each row of this representation such that it forms a clique of size k in the graph, right? Now the claim is that this problem is uh, uh, so this problem to begin with can easily be solved in k to the k time, right? Uh, you know, times n or whatever. Let's call it O star of k to the k, which is really you know O star of two to the uh, k log k time, right? And this is just trivial, right? You just try for every row, you have k columns. So for every row, you just pick a location and you just enumerate all possibilities. So you get k to the k. For each possibility, you check whether it, it forms a click, right? So that's easy. So, uh, but the interesting thing is that you cannot do any better, right? And to see this, we're going to do a very uh, clever reduction from tree coloring. So what is the idea? So we have to be very careful about the parameters here, unfortunately. So um, we're going to pick, so you give me a graph, right? And we are going to pick K, let's see. Uh, So k is 2n, right? So n here is the, you know, the number of vertices in the original graph, right? So 2n log base 3 of n, right? We're going to pick k to be this. And the idea is that we're going to take the graph g, which is given, and the, the question is, of course, is, is it is G3 colorable? Where n is the number of vertices of G, right? So the question is G is 3 colorable. So what we're going to do, we're going to partition V of G into uh, K sets of equal size, right? So V is going to be V1, union V2, union Vk. Uh, and the important thing is that the size of the eye, you know, we're going to set them all to be of equal size. So if you go carefully to it, 
it's going to be at most size uh, log 3 to the n, right, divided by 2. So now, why is it important? For every vi, we can look on the induced graph. Right? And we can now just enumerate all possible colloids of this you know, chunk of the graph. All three colorings. Okay, so how many colorings are there? Well, there are three to the power of the size of VI, which because of the careful way we chose the parameter, this is going to be uh, uh, three to the power of this log three to the n divided by two, which is just a complicated way square root n, which if you go to the value of k, it's smaller than the size of k. Okay. <coughs> so then we're going to form a matrix. Okay, here's the matrix. Every row is going to be one of those chunks, V1, V2, and so on. And in the column for V1, we are just going to list all the colorings of V1. For every coloring, we're going to give a possible coloring. We're going to give a, a vertex. And then um, they're going to be less than k coloring, so we we are, we we are going to replicate the last coloring, let's say, so that we have k col k col k vertices here, and we're going to repeat it for every row, right, until we get k. Right. So now we have what we have. We have colorings of every one of the chunks. For every chunk, we have all the possible colorings of it. There are k uh, we, by padding. We got exactly k uh, possible colorings and there are k columns, right? And now the idea is that we're going to connect two, two vertices, right? If the following two things end. First, they encode a valid coloring of their part, right? So this is, uh, this is a valid coloring for this chunk, this is a valid coloring for this part, and the two colorings are consistent. They give the same color, you know. <coughs> if you take the induced graph on those two parts and you take the two coloring for those two parts, together they form a valid coloring for the merged graph on those two parts, right? So clearly we can build this graph. It is enough to build it. It's a polynomial time reduction. We don't have to worry about that. And now clearly three coloring reduces to just find a click in this graph where every row you have to pick one, uh, exactly one vertex. Right, and we are done, right? So if there is a, si a click of size k in this graph, k click, uh, k times k click in the graph implies immediately that the original graph g is three coloring. Okay, so that's a reduction. And the important thing here is that we started with the graph n and we reduce it to a new instance. The new instance is pretty large, right? If you think about it, it's roughly size k square, uh, size k square roughly. In fact, it's even worse than that if you think about it. It's um, k to the fourth, naively, right? Um, because there are, k, there are k square vertices and every pair of them might be connected by an edge. So this, we reduce it to a large instance, but the important thing is that k, this is with parameter k, and k is this n over log n. I'm ignoring constant, right? Now, three coloring, to remind you, we have a linear reduction to it from precise. So we know that it's uh, in the, under attach, it's, it's, you cannot do it better than two to the, the n, right? So, <coughs> so in particular, if we can solve, if we can solve, right? If we can solve a, a k, k times k click in time, so let's see. If you can okay, do click time in time, which is uh, O star of two small O 
of k log k, right? This would imply uh, O star algorithm 2 to the uh, small o of n for tricoloring, which by the reduction that we already know, it would imply uh, 2 to the small o of n algorithm for, you know, where n here is a cell formula for trisat. And this contradict uh, at the edge, right? So, and here I use the fact that k log k, once you plug in this value, right, it's just going to be n, right? So in fact, we got the following theorem under at the edge, k times k click, Can not be solved in two to the uh, well O star of course two small O of small O of K log K. And that's uh, very nice because it's a much stronger lower bound on the parameter than just linear. And we'll see other examples shortly. Okay, so um, okay, so let's see what we can do next. Okay, so a natural variant of this k uh, k by k click is the k permutation uh, version, right? Where we don't allow a vertex to be, uh, we want to pick a vertex from every row, from a click, but also we don't allow to pick two vertices uh, from the same column, right? Uh, so, um, so essentially one can do a, a randomized reduction to show that you cannot do better again than uh, to the uh, small k log k for the k by k permutation. This is a randomized reduction, so there are some complexity involved. I don't want to get into it because it's not too interesting, uh, but it's the obvious thing, right? The obvious thing is that um, if you have an algorithm for k by k permutation, uh, k by k uh, click permutation, what you do given a regular instance, you just randomly permute each one of the rows, right? And the probability you succeed, right, the probability that uh, the resulting uh, matrix now has, if the original matrix has a solution for k click, the new, the new matrix would have a solution for the um, permutation click. The probability for that is that, and this is larger than e to the minus k, right? So you can just repeat it this time, right, do amplification. If you had an algorithm for k, k by k click permutation, you just run it e to the k, you know, times or e to the k, you know, some noise times. And um, if any of them says yes, you know, the original problem is a click. If all of them says no, then, you know, it's very high probability that the instance does not have um, k by k click. Um, so this is, uh, let's see, which theorem is this? Um, this is theorem 14, 13. And I'm not going into this uh, in big and de great detail because it's intuitively clear, right? That the permutation thing should not matter, right? Under that edge, K times K permutation click. Cannot be solved in, cannot be solved in right, a star. 
to be uh, kill small o of k log k. Okay, so this is a convenient thing to have that because permutation version is easier to handle. Okay, I should mention, by the way, that uh, this reduction we did was a, a many reduction, right? We we applied the black box for the original prob uh, for the permutation problem many times. So with a bit more cleverness, you can reduce it to one instance. And with a lot more work, you can also de-randomize it. So it gets a deterministic thing. So you get uh, uh, the same statement I said above, but this is for, uh, you know, deterministic reduction. And, you know, since I misstated 14, 13, this also follows. Okay, the next result deals with a theorem uh, 14.15 and uh, deals with permutation heating set permutation uh, k by k k by k heating set okay so what is this problem? This is a problem where the, the, the underlying ground set is this k by k click as before, right? And uh, the question, is there a heating set where we pick uh, uh, one vertex from every row and every column, right? Or, or from every row, right? whether we do the permutation version, not the permutation version. So the claim is that uh, uh, permutation uh, k by k heating set cannot be solved in, you know, the regular time, what you would expect, O star of 2 small o of k log k under at edge. Right. And the reduction is not hard. The proof uh, the reduction is from um, permutation click because, um, right, we are given instance of k by k permutation k click, k by k permutation click, right, so we get this, this matrix. And now the trick is that we are going to look in this matrix, let, let's look on two elements, two vertices that are not connected. This one and this one, right? So those are two vertices that don't have an edge in the graph. And what we are going to do, we're going to take all the elements in the two rows, excluding those two vertices, and we are all going to add it to the set system. This is just a way of saying, you know, you must pick uh, either a vertex in the first row or a vertex in the second row, which are not one of those two vertices, right? Because if you pick both of them, of course, uh, you are doomed, right? And um, and of course, you know, we are going to add any row as a set, so you have to pick an element from every row and so on. And that's a reduction, right? And the proof of correctness is, is immediate. We get a set system and... Um, you know, there is a heating set of size k, which is one vertex from every row and one vertex from every column, if and only if, um, you know, we, we, we have a heating set of size k, the heating set has to pick a vertex from every row, because of those special sets that we pick, we have the property that any two vertices that we pick are uh, connected by an edge, because if we pick two elements uh, that are not connected by an edge to the heating set, then the, this red set that we build will not be heat and we'll get a contradiction. So that's the end of the, this proof. It's an easy reduction. One can prove, in fact, a stronger version of this uh, K by K heating set. So a thin set has only one element per row, one element. P 
pill. Whoa. Okay. So the idea is that um, um, right. The idea is that uh, you can solve the the k by k uh, k times k uh, uh, heating set for uh, fourteen sets, which is kind of magical. It's suppose it requires some uh, some work. The book limit is an exercise. I'm not going to go into that. Um, so you get the same hardness result. You get that um, this cannot be solved quickly. So theorem. Uh, let's see what theorem is this. Fourteen sixteen. Uh, K by K heating set fourteen set requires. I'm just going to be extremely informal, right? Requires two to the K log K time under that edge. And, and and this continues a similar, you know, in a similar uh, fashion. Okay, so the next result is that uh, closest string cannot be solved in, uh, you know, time better than two to the uh, small of d log d. So what is the closest string? You know, this problem that we already saw before, we have n strings, right? They are defined over some alphabet, sorry, d log sigma. Um, they are defined over an alphabet sigma. They are all of the same length, right? So they're all of uh, length L, right? And then the question was, is there a center string such as the distance between y and xi is at most d for all i, right? That was the question. And we saw how to solve it. Um, in essentially this time before, um, essentially this was a clever guess the you know guess the different character in every step. Uh, and of course, the running time here is O star, right? The star is important as usual because uh, n would appear there. So one can prove reducing from uh, the problem itself that you cannot get better running time at h. I'm not going to go into details. Another cute problem that falls into the slower bound is distortion. So what is distortion? We're given a graph, G, and we would like to map the vertices of G into the integer numbers. Right? So we are we embedding them into the integer numbers. For every vertex, we have to assign a different number, right? And so let's call this F. F as distortion D if what? So for every two vertices in the graph, we require that the distance in the graph between U and V is a lower bound to the distance between FU and FV. And that has to be smaller than d times the distance in the graph. Right. Um, so this is called the distortion. This is a very small, very simple version of, of embedding problem. And supposedly this problem can be solved in d to the d time. Um, which is not very surprising in some sense because what really this says is that um, the 
you know, somehow the path bandwidth of this graph is D. That's really what it says. So you can just do dynamic programming, I think. And there is a matching lower bound. So theorem uh, 14, 18, uh, distortion can be solved in d to the d time. Again, the, the O star hides uh, polynomial patterns don't care about and and uh, cannot distortion cannot be solved cannot be solved in again O star of T to the small O of D log D under attach. Attach. So this is nice. It, it says that we essentially have a tight algorithm for this problem. Okay, so a nice, an interesting problem we looked at was click edge cover. Right, so the question was, is there a way to cover the graph uh, with uh, uh, k clicks, but what we have to cover is the edges, right? And essentially we argued that there is a kernel for this problem, but the kernel was monstrously large. It was of size two to the K, right? Essentially. So because of this click, because of this uh, kernel being so large, we got running time of two to the two to the K roughly, right? So the claim is that you cannot do any better, uh, which is quite uh, surprising and nice. Again, under uh, a regular assumption of at the edge, and the claim is that uh, there is a reduction from preset to click edge cover okay um, and the click edge cover the graph the graph that is generate right it's the the size of the graph is going to be you know same as formula right so of n plus m right this number of edges and vertices sorry the number of vertices is going to be uh, it's not a much bigger graph but the important thing is that the the question the number k in the reduction is going to be logarithmic right and so this is the ultimate compression right we reduce the parameter uh, to be very small and as such we get that this immediately implies that there is no algorithm is no algorithm for uh, uh, edge click cover cover uh, with running time with running time uh, o star of 2 to the 2 to the small o of k under a touch. Okay. And I'm not going to prove the theorem. The book does not provide the proof. I think it requires uh, some work. Okay, so one of the nice things about that edge is that now we can prove uh, lower bounds on the running time of algorithm that are doubly one half, right? And you can prove tight bounds of what we believe is correct uh, because doubly one hardness is in fact pretty weak as far as the dependency on the parameter k in the end, right? Uh, it might be that... Uh, a problem is W1 hard and the running time is N to the, you know, 
and to the power of log 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 of k, which is, you know, not very interesting. So the following theorem states that uh, under at H, there is no uh, algorithm, there is not a fixed parameter algorithm for the problem where the running time is uh, some function of k times n to the small o of k, right? So the proof, um, we essentially saw the proof before, but we need to be extremely careful about the parameters. So, so first let's dis say what is o of k really means here, right? It means that this can be written as a function of k over s of k, where s of k is monotone increasing, increasing, and goes to infinity, and goes to infinity, goes to infinity. Okay. So, right. Okay, so we can think about, you know, that's really what's written in the small o, this explicit function. Okay, and now we need to be extremely careful about the parameters. So it's going to be a bit tedious. Uh, and what we need is the following property. Um, right, so what do we need? Um, Right, we will need the property that k to the power of k over s, s1, right, that this is smaller than uh, f of k, which is smaller than n, okay? So in fact, we are assuming here that f is, uh, you know, f is a pretty fast, quickly going function, but that's okay, right? Let's just make the poor, the claim even stronger. So that's completely fine. And we also need that f of k is smaller or equal than n, right? So we can assume that, right? We pick f, if f is too weak, we just make it very strong, you know, we make it faster going, that is fine. And now, how are we going to, to prove the theorem? So the, the reduction is going to be from tree coloring into click. Right. And we already saw how to do that, right? The idea was that we take the the graph and we decompose it into sets, right? We can decompose it into sets V1 to Vk, right? Here, every set is going to be of size Vi, is going to be of size N over K. Okay. And then we build the graph, right? For every one of the, we build this matrix, if you remember, well, uh, vi we had we enumerated all possible coloring right so the number of colorings for this section is 3 to the n over k which seems a lot but as i said uh we're going to pick the parameter k very careful right so we're going to pick k to be the largest one such that uh, this inequality above holds right this inequality so um okay so, so why is it? Why are we doing this reduction to begin with? Well, tree coloring. We already know there is a re linear reduction from tree sets, so we know that you cannot solve it in better time than you cannot solve it in two to the small o of n, right? So we want to claim that if we can solve click in time uh, that is stated in better time than stated in the theorem, then we will get uh, a faster algorithm for tree coloring, which is impossible. Okay, so we are building this graph, right? For every vi and every coloring, we have a vertex, right? So let's call this graph h. So of course, the question is, what's the number of vertices of h? Well, you know, we're going to have k groups, and every group is going to have 3 to the n over k uh, colors, uh, col different colorings, right? And again, to remind you, we connect two vertices if the coloring is consistent. And then we are, are asking for a click of size k. Okay, so that's the idea, right? Um, now, right, and now we just need to do the calculation, 
right? So let's assume, right, assume we, for the sake of contradiction, we have an algorithm for k click uh, with running time. So this is the, going to be the critical thing, you know, f of k times uh, the number of vertices in the graph. Well, now this is going to be v of h, right? Because we're running the algorithm on h, right? To remind you, finding a click of size k in this in this graph is equivalent to finding k coloring. And the running time is small o of k on the number of vertices, which in our case is k over s of k. Right? So that was what we wrote down. Right? And now we just need to, you know, put everything in. Right? So, uh, so to remind you, we assumed f of k is smaller than n. That's how we pick the value of k. Right? So the first term is smaller than n. The number of vertices is what I wrote above. Right? It's k times to the n over k. This is raised to the power of k divided by s of k. Okay, and now we just need to do some reordering, right? So this is n. k is going to be to the power of k over s of k, right? But to remind you, uh, let me remind you of this inequality Right, how we picked k. Right, so uh, we picked k. Oh, wrong thingy. Uh, we picked k right, we picked k such that this holds, right? And to remind you, S1, SK is monotonically increasing. So replacing SK by S1, in fact, makes the, the thing bigger. So this implies, going back to here, that this term, right, this term is smaller than N by the choice of K. So that's great. And now 3 to the N over K multiplied by k over sk is, of course, uh, this is just 3 to the power of n divided by s of k, right? Okay. Um, now, to remind you, k was some function of n, right? And maybe a tiny function of n, but some function of n, right? Because it was the inverse of f, essentially. So, in particular, this what's written here is really n square right times 3 of n of uh, essentially f minus 1 uh, s of f minus 1 of n that's really what's written here that's the running time but to remind you, uh, f is, we assume f is increasing, so the inverse function is monotonically increasing, so that combined function is monotonically increasing and going to infinity. So this is, in fact, this running time is just n squared uh, 2 to the small o of n, right? Uh, and that, of course, contradicts that edge. Right? Because this means that we can solve at uh, uh, three sat in this time, and that's contradicted at that. And that's the end of the proof. So this is nice.